Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from the nations to give thanks to your holy name and make it our glory to praise you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate in these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love every, everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Absalom unexpectedly came up against David's servants. He was mounted on a mule, and as the mule passed under the branches of a large terebinth, his hair caught fast in the tree. He hung between heaven and earth while the mule he had been riding ran off. Someone saw this and reported to Job that he had seen Absalom hanging from a terebinth. And taking three pikes in hand, he thrust for the heart of Absalom, still hanging from the tree alive. Now David was sitting between the two gates, and a lookout went up to the roof of the gate above the city wall, where he looked about and saw a man running all alone. The lookout shouted to inform the king, who said, If he is alone, he has good news to report. The king said, Step aside and remain in attendance here. So he stepped aside and remained there. When the Cushite messenger came in, he said, Let my lord the king receive the good news that this day the Lord has taken your part, freeing you from the grasp of all who rebelled against you. But the king asked the Cushite, Is young Absalom safe? The Cushite replied, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rebel against you with evil intent be as that young man. The king was shaken and went up to the room over the city gate to weep. He said as he wept, My son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died instead of you, Absalom, my son, my son. Job, who told that the king, who was told that the king was weeping and mourning for Absalom, and the day's victory was turned into mourning for the whole army when they heard that the king was grieving for his son. The word of the Lord. Listen, Lord, and answer me. Incline your ear, O Lord, answer me, for I am afflicted and poor. Keep my faith, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Listen, Lord, and answer me. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for to you I call all the day. Gladden my soul of your ser- gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Listen, O Lord, and answer me. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my pleading. Listen, Lord, and answer me.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come lay your hands on her that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him. There was a woman afflicted with the hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors, and had spent all that she, she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd, and touched his gar- his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately her flood of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter James and John, the brother of James, when they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, Little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of twelve, arose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this, and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. How do we grow in greater faith? Faith is a theological virtue. It's one of the four theological virtues, as opposed to moral virtues, a faith, hope, and love. Those theological virtues are given to us directly by God. We just have to expose our heart to receive that gift, right, of faith. And many of us, if not all of us, you know, could probably wish we could grow in greater faith. As a matter of fact, I believe it's in Mark's go- Matthew's gospel, right? What do the disciples do when they come to, the, to Jesus? They request of him, Lord, increase our faith. It's a beautiful prayer increase our faith, right? You're asking for that theological virtue to grow more deeply, really, in um, one's just trust in walking with Christ in all things, right? Believing in what has been revealed to us um, in a very concrete way, in our experiential 
um, in, our, in our everyday experiences. You know, in both stories today, uh, in the gospel, we have these uh, parallel stories. St. Mark is very, um, one of the literary devices he uses in his gospels, he does what, what we would call like a gospel sandwich. You know, like you have the two bread and the two pieces of bread, and you have the meat in the middle, you have one story, and then that story ends, and you have another story, and then you have a pickup of the original story, right? You have this gospel sandwich today. Uh, and he does that, there's an intention here. You know, you might, as a reader, you look at it, and you be like, wait a minute, what happened to the girl and Jarius and the daughter? All of a sudden, this woman with a hemorrhage. But there's parallels that you see between these two stories that would have happened, it looks like, in the same account, if you will. Uh, both, if you notice, are daughters, Right? Jesus specifically said, this is one of the only times that Jesus uses that word um, daughter, right? Daughter, your faith has saved you. And of course, Jairus is coming to Jesus pleading for his daughter. So you have that image of, of, of father and daughter going on right there. And secondly, both um, the, the idea of 12 years as well is in there, right? So this woman who has a hemorrhage uh, has been afflicted for 12 years, and then St. Mark specifically says, gives us the age of Jairus' daughter, 12 years. And then finally, there's more parallels, but another parallel would be, uh, you have this understanding of insiders and outsiders. Again, this is a common theme in Mark's gospel. Those are those who are on the outside who just kind of don't get Jesus, and then those who are on the inside. And of course, all of us who are readers of the gospel, we're his intention is to show us that we are insiders, right, of knowing who our Lord is. We get this special insight into who Jesus is. And you see that, right? First, in the, in the woman who has had the hemorrhage, there's this huge crowd around him that is pressing upon him. But they don't understand really who our Lord is. Right? They're, they're more of outsiders. The only insider is this lady who comes and touches him with great faith. If I but touch his cloak, I will be healed. Even after having experienced 12 years of this hemorrhage, going to doctors that are only making it worse. As I mentioned yesterday, you know, this is just a little side joke, right? As, uh, as, things, cha- as, as things change, some things never, like, as things continue to change, right? Some things never change, right? As things change, some things never change, right? Sometimes doctors make it worse, right? No offense to any of our doctors out here, right? So this poor woman has been uh, afflicted for 12 years, right? She's getting only worse, but she goes to the Lord. She's, she's kind of like an insider, right? She knows who God is. She knows who Jesus is, right? It's divine. Only somebody who has divine power could do this. And then, of course, in the, the, the outsider's and insider theme continues, right, with Jairus' daughter. So what does Jesus do? He pulls aside Peter, James, and John, those are the ones that get to come in and see him raise this child from the dead, along with the Jarius and his wife. So you have those themes that are happening. But the final, one of the uh, final themes that I want to mention, though, I think has to do with faith. Both exercise great faith before the miracle happens. So here's this a synagogue official who would have been held in great esteem amongst the people, running to this rabbi and falling at his knees, right? Showing this kind of great humility before Jesus, falling at his knees and begging for him to come and cure his poor daughter who is dying. I mean, every parent would do something like that. You just, you, you go to the point where you just, you just beg, right? If your child is, is dying, you just, you don't care what anybody thinks of you, right? You're willing to do crazy things to get just as long as they can be cured. And he exercises great faith in Jesus. Right? Before Jesus does anything for him, he exercises great faith. And of course, the, the woman in the, with the hemorrhage, right, she takes a great risk because at that time, those who had blood that was exposed, they were, they were, they were, they were known to be unclean. Right? They weren't supposed to touch anyone unless they make that person ritually unclean. Ritually unclean is what it is. Um, but she just presses in, right? This woman who has a hemorrhage for 12 years, right? Certainly not high on the, on the social chain, if you will. She presses in with this intention, if I but touch his clothes, I will be healed. So she exercises faith before the miracle happens. 
You know, it's our faith that opens up the miracles in our life. And you see that in the gospel today with both of these stories. See, oftentimes, and I think this is a real challenge in our culture, in our life, maybe it's the materialism that we're living or secularism. Like, we want to see the miracle first and then we'll have faith. Lord, show me the miracle first, and then I'll have faith. Cure that person first, and then I'll have faith. But that's not what happens in the gospel today. The folks exercise faith in the Lord first. And it would have been, I mean, each one of these experiences would have been very hard. Again, Jarius almost humiliated himself in front of this crowd, falling at the knees of this rabbi as a synagogue official. And again, this woman who's taking the risk of being ostracized by pressing in with exposed blood, right, to make everybody there ritually unclean. They express great faith in the face of what you might say opposition or fear. And that's what opens up the miracles in their life. So how do we grow in faith, right? How do we grow in faith? Well, (laughs) my response to you is exercise it. Exercise that faith. Just lean in what you may think is a impossible or what difficult. Just lean into the Lord and be persistent too as well. Be consistent. I've seen great things happen in the, the lives of people that I've walked through as a priest in pastoral counseling or in spiritual direction where we just question, why did God allow this to happen? I just don't understand. And it's not for like months or even years later in retrospect. We see how everything in God's perspective, was being placed, like was being placed in, was being placed in the right place to prepare them for something else. But at the time, we wouldn't have known that. But they just kept leaning into their faith. They kept exercising their faith. They kept looking towards Jesus, and then they saw the miracles happen. And then once the miracles happen, what does that do? Well, we grow in even greater faith. And then what does the Lord do? He challenges that faith even more. He keeps moving the line up, right? Okay, now that you have faith in me here, I want you to exercise it even more, right? I'm going to challenge you again. So it just keeps going, right? Until you get to the point where your faith is just, I mean, all cylinders are hitting when it comes to that faith. There's nothing in your life that could happen that could shake that faith, right? Again, that's the height of sanctity. That's what many of the saints in your life had that kind of faith. So how do we grow in faith? Well, we, ex- we, we follow the example of both of the characters in the gospel today. Jarius, right, exercising that faith before the miracle. And then the, the woman caught in the hemorrhage, right, who exercises that faith before the miracle. So lean into that faith and expect miracles from that faith. So may God bless you and may God be with you. Amen. <clears throat> coming before the Lord this morning, asking for the Lord to help us in our faith and then to expect miracles to happen in our lives. We entrust to him our intentions and our prayers. We pray for our church throughout the world, especially for all those um, who may be lacking in faith and struggling in their faith. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, uh, for our families, especially for those who have struggled with unforgiveness, that God may give them humility, the strength, and the faith to show forgiveness within their families and to amend broken relation, to amend broken relationships. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, for all those uh, who serve us in um, public service, uh, for their protection, their safety, and for all those who serve us in the military, for their protection, their safety. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, um, for all young people who are discerning their vocation in life, um, especially those called to the priesthood or the religious life uh, for our diocese. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, for all of our homebound, our sick, especially those who may have a terminal illness, that they may show the faith that Jarius and the woman with the hemorrhage showed in the gospel today. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, for all those who have died, especially the intention of this Mass today, 
for all the poor souls in purgatory, especially those who have no one to pray for them, and for all of our beloved deceased family and friends. We pray to the Lord. And in silence, we offer our own needs and our petitions to our loving God. Most loving God, increase our faith, uh, that we may show that faith to others, and by opening up miracles in our life, continue to walk in your ways, as we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the, wine, the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is, great, it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God,
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your merciful love. O Lord, let me never be put to shame, for I call on you.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this, this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just to let you know, tomorrow um, is the Candlemas Mass, which is uh, the presentation in the temple. Um, there's a rite in here for blessing of candles. So if you want to bring your candles tomorrow, or if you want to just take one of those or buy one of those back there in the votive candles, you're welcome to do that. And there's a solemn blessing that I'll give um, before, uh, before the Mass. Uh, usually there's a procession, but we're just going to do the, the simple uh, blessing, okay? So if you want to bring candles tomorrow to be blessed, to burn in your homes, I'll bless those. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. And have a wonderful day today.